Welcome back in to ESPN Louisville Plus. We're doing this thing once again. It's, it's funny because it feels like we were just doing this a week ago, or maybe it was like a week and a half, two weeks ago for the University of Louisville. And now we're doing this for the University of Kentucky. I'm Justin Sofer. Joining me today, my guy, Big Mike Gandolfo and Jason Entz. How you guys doing, boys? I've changed my name. So I was hoping oh. it would pop up here. It says oh. Mike Cal is Gandolfo. That's how you say <laughs> So Cal is gone, Dolfo is how you say it. So the, yeah, uh, like say thank goodness to Mike Honcho. Mike Honcho, Honcho. that's right. <laughs> I did a little spread for Playboy magazine, spread my ass cheeks and everything. So I mean, I am so freaking like Ince will tell you like after that Oakland loss, I was like, there's no way that this Joker can come back and coach a game mm -hmm. on the sidelines at, in Lexington. And when it looked like he was coming back, I I, I probably had a little bit of like 36 hours of depression. So. I am, I am probably like the happiest person out there. The fact that this guy is out of here, that we've had to suffer through five awful years of college basketball as far as Kentucky goes. And the, what made it so awful is the highs and lows, the, tr the freaking roller coaster ride that we would be taking on every single year, except for the year that he went nine and 16 and just totally sucked. Um, but to have one postseason win in the NCAA tournament, one postseason win in the SEC tournament in five years, even though I know there wasn't a tournament one of those years, so four years is still completely unacceptable. That's definitely not the gold standard. I am going to just say this, though, because I heard it on the radio a lot today. I think as a Kentucky fan, like if we have an off year and we get upset once in a while, I don't think that the fans are just going to completely lose it on that. Mm -hmm. What what is this? And, and Dick Vitale said, "I can't believe the fans are upset about two losses in the NCAA tournament." It's the trend. Like when it's not getting better, when we're when the team is consistently making looking the exact same, making the same mistakes, going through the same patterns, and you win sixty four percent of your games at Kentucky, you need to go. And so, uh, Cal, thanks for everything that happened in the first six years. The the next four were eh, okay, but the last five have been awful. Yeah, and, and uh, look, I appreciate everything Dick Vitale has done for college basketball. Dick Vitale, hasn't, his opinion hasn't really held any water with me in about four years. It's not communism. Um, it's the same, same with Seth Greenberg. You know, with, they're they're going to carry water. Hell, I'm surprised they're not carrying Cal's bags all the way to Fayetteville. Um, Suey. This has been a long time coming, and – we were all the weird part about it is we were all resigned to the fact that we were doing year number 16. You know, we went through the couple days of, uh, you know, if you, if you look at it from the five stages of grief, we were in the acceptance stage. <laughs> we had gone through the anger. We'd gone through the bargaining. We were hoping, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get rid of him. Somebody will buy him out. And then that didn't happen. Um, we were ready, you know, we were looking ahead to next year. We were going to figure out what team we lose to in the in the round of 64 next year. And then all of a sudden, SMU fires their coach and dominoes start falling. And, you know, we're all just sitting around Sunday night doing whatever. And this just falls in Mitch Barnhart's lap. And the funniest part about it is to me is that Cal, his downfall at Kentucky came because he couldn't make changes and because he couldn't read the room when it came to college basketball and how it is changing. He couldn't read the room in terms of fans being sick and tired of his shtick. He couldn't read the room in terms of needing to adjust and make changes with his staff. And his downfall, final downfall comes from not being able to read the room and thinking that he was going to use the threat of going to Arkansas with Kentucky not having to pay a dime to suddenly get people to go, no, 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 come back. We don't want you to go. 
Do you believe that? Do you believe that's accurate? It's, like, is it's that, wild. Is it's that, wild. When everybody in the world is like, this is Christmas in in April. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> I know. I mean, and it was I, obviously I posted on Truly. Go ahead. Sorry. I do think there's credence to that because one, there were multiple people that were hearing about that before Truly Donovan reported it. Two, because it sounds exactly like something Cal would do. And three, because there's no there's no secret that Dwayne Peavy wants the UK athletic director job. And he's wanted it for a while, and Mitch won't retire. Mitch is going to continue to stay at this job until he's ash and dust, and even then he still may not retire. Um, I completely buy that. I, there may be some variations of the story. There may be some details that were left out or some things that might be a little bit embellished. But I could 100% see Cal trying to have his cake and eat it too, think he's going to pull a slick one, not violate his contract, and get people to back him over Mitch Barnhart. So, obviously, I'm coming from this from an outside perspective, watching this and watching everything that's happened. And I know I put out the video a couple months ago or so that that, that Strebel and people got, you know, whatever, a little annoyed about when I, when I said, basically, you don't really want to, you don't want to um, replace your hall of famer. And I get it after watching everything as it's unfolded and listening to you guys every night, having to do these post games for these games that are just, I mean, just uh, unbearable, even as like, even as a, I, I think since I've been doing stuff with the station and doing, I, I don't want I'm not really radio, but doing this kind of stuff, I, my, I guess my, biased biasness is that a, is that a word i can use has changed sure. which is more of i'm looking at it from just kind of a, a neutral observer now at this point and it's just it, it's such a weird time to watch the end of this era and i view the era as being it started in 2017 the era ending because you had such a great run in the bluegrass for uofl and uk mostly uk more than uofl but uofl they technically did win that ship. I'll say that, <laughs> but from 20, 2012, especially to 2015. And then now you're having seen this um, from the outside, just watching John Cal Perry. I'll be honest. I'm kind of, it. I have hated John Cal Perry for so long that now it makes me sad to see this happen, but I also understand why it's happening. But my problem is that I just wonder is, do, <laughs> I, I obviously I know the names that are being put out there and the names that UK is going to go after. You have to, you, you at least have to try. It's a, we're doing the same thing at another level that what we were doing with Louisville, right? When it came to, you have to take those shots that are unreasonable, but obviously you're going to, I'd imagine end up with a much better coach than sorry. Sorry, Pat Kelsey. Sorry, sorry, guys. sorry, sorry, I, sorry, Louisville, but, but then Pat Kelsey, do you oh, go ahead? Go ahead. Ins. Sorry. I was going to say I would agree with that, except we're we're talking about Mitch Barnhart, right? Um, and I, and I disagree Mitch with that. I think Mitch Barnhart's a hell of an AD. Well, no, no. I was going to say that Mitch Barnhart wants who he wants, mm -hmm. and if the guy he wants isn't who the fans want and isn't who quote unquote we have to take a shot at, then it doesn't matter. And I think we all know the guy he wants is Scott Drew, right? And it's. I think Cal, or I think um, Mitch remembers the first time he had to hire a basketball coach, and he went after the guys he wanted, and he got turned down, and he mm -hmm. got turned down again. The fans started to get a little worried, and then he panicked and he hired a guy because they beat U of L in the tournament. Yeah, and I don't think he wants to go if he knows that he's got Scott Drew ready to say yes. Do you tempt fate and go and ask somebody else first to make Scott Drew feel like he's not the first choice? Which is why I think that, and by the way, if you haven't seen it, um, there is a journalist named Keith Taylor who is currently dunking on Matt Jones right now on Twitter. Um, mm. He is, um, he works for the Berea Citizen. He's a, um, He's the one that reported that they've offered Scott Drew and Mitch or uh, Matt Jones goes, quote, contrary to reports, I do not believe Scott Drew has been offered yet because, you know, Matt Jones' beliefs are, are fact. 
Um, the guy replied, for the record, I don't post smoke. I post legit information that I get from sources. I've been an award-winning journalist for 30 years, and I don't post or report things just for the sake of doing it. Nice. Um, just like drop um, the mic. Um, so I'm going to trust said journalist. Yeah. I'm going to trust said journalist that we've offered Scott Drew. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to if, if I know I have somebody willing to say yes, I'm not going to risk losing that when I've already gone down that road once before. And when I just watched you of L go through that two weeks ago and have to settle for somebody that wasn't their choice. And it made it look like it was a panic move. Oh, it, it also, right. And also to go off of that, is there any point of it where like one of my biggest arguments about the way that it kind of played out for Louisville was optically it took a big hit. Like you took a big hit by going through all those stages. If you have one guy, maybe yes, Maybe if you want to get like a Hurley or a Billy Donovan or whatever, you could try to put those feelers out there. But as quickly as you knew that this was going to happen, if you can, with one fell swoop, replace Cal Perry, you go to, to your one guy and he says yes immediately. That's kind of like swinging a big stick if you're Kentucky, which they do. But just saying we got our guy, we, we you know, we did it in less than what, what's it going to take 48, you know, 72 hours and then just move on rather than having to. We tried him. Yes. No, we tried. We tried Billy D. He's not interested. We tried, you know, Hurley, all these, all these guys. And to me, the more and more you do that, the the worse it looks on your brand. Not that UK's brand really is going to be hurt very long, you know, very that's much. That, compared that's, to assuming, like how, that's assuming though, that, that we, as what we know from the fan base or in the media side is actually knows what the hell is actually going on. Right. And at the, the reality of it is, is things get leaked. For everything that gets leaked gets leaked for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, for example, everybody who was talking about, well, you know, we know that nothing has been offered to anyone as of, you know, two o'clock this afternoon before yeah. Cal, because Cal hadn't resigned. And everyone's like, oh, well, this person's saying no, and this person's saying no, and this person's saying no. All those no's are empty. And all those no's are, are, to me, all they are are negotiating points in the first place. Okay. Right. You're going to say no. Why would you say yes and hurt your spot from a negotiation standpoint? Right. And at the same time, when you go back and you look at it, all the coaching changes that have, that have happened in our market and whatever else, how many times do we actually, you know, with the, maybe the exception of George reaching out and getting Patino, because I don't know a whole lot about that. That's that got everybody. It's, mm -hmm. it's never the first choice. Right. Tubby coming was probably the first choice, you know, back when he was hired. But he was a pretty hot name back then. I think he, a lot of people don't realize how hot of a candidate he was. Yeah. So at the same time, you know, most of the time, Rick wasn't the first choice at Kentucky. We know that. Cal was the potentially the first choice when he was hired. Uh, but that was uh, through a lot of discernment and Mike Pratt's leader, uh, Mike Pratt's guidance and all this other kind of stuff. I think you go for who you go for and see if you can go get one of those big names. If Louisville hadn't tried for some of those big names and gotten turned down, it could have been a worse look than what it actually was. I don't think it actually has any bearing on anything perception that the job's not as good. I think that all that's kind of crap. I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're going to target some people and I guarantee you whether Scott Drew's been offered or not, that there are those conversations going on right now with multiple people yeah. to see who might be interested in this thing to go for it. And to think that Danny Hurley wouldn't leave UConn for SEC football money when in a stable conference situation is short-sighted because he would, right? I mean, he would have to – you have to at least listen to the conversation when someone puts a, a a, well, an eight-digit eight check in front if, of you. Not right? if what he said about his wife is, is, is factually true. If, if his wife is, is an important part of that and she's – She's already said, you know, in previous discussions, she doesn't want to leave that, that area. That's true. Then he very well could be a thing where I'm like, he's like, I appreciate you guys reaching out. It, there's no point in having the conversation. Happy wife, happy life. No doubt about it. I mean, I think there's definitely probably a lot to that. I actually haven't seen that report yet. Ince. So, but at the same time, no, like no, at the, in the press conference last night. Yeah. Oh, he when did? He, when he, he turned down the job. Yeah. He's like, my, he's before, like, I'm, I'm broken broke before. He you know, goes, I'm not trying to get divorced right after I just started getting money. Yeah, well, again, I think then we get the whole backtracking with my phone broke and all that stuff on the McAfee show today. And, 
I didn't really know that the job was actually open. And, you know, mm-hmm. and like, what, you know, what is Jay Wright going to say in national television? He's like, yeah, if Kentucky calls, I'm going to go. Like, that's not happy. And actually, I thought the thing that Nate Oates put out there was hilarious because that to me is just a cry that says, hey, you better come with something in the upper seven digit number, if not an eight digit number versus, you know, coming at me with a five digit number. I I look at all that stuff. It's, it's all positioning. And at the end of the day, if we're if they can go out and they can get one of the the cream of the crop guys, then you know who cares if it was the second call, the third call, the fourth call, it doesn't matter. You know we got to get the right person, and as long as that happens, let's go. I I just wonder if there's just a shift in the I guess the climate in college basketball where what used to matter, like, I mean, no matter what you, nobody can poo poo that Kentucky is the top job in the sport. Right. But at the same time, does that matter at the same level as it did 10, 15 years ago? You know what I mean? Now it's now maybe guys look at it and just look at all the pressure, look at all the consternation that I can get as soon as I'm not successful. And obviously you don't want guys that don't feel like they're going to be successful right away. Anyway, I, I just wonder how much of it now is viewed as almost a negative thing. The pressure. How much of it is it like, oh, hey, I'm Nate Oates. Hey, I can go to the Final Four. Hey, I can win here, and I have the SEC money. Why leave? You know, I just wonder how much that is. Like, I mean, also, Scott Drew, similar situation. He's, he's pretty cozy there at Baylor. Maybe he will come here because I know he wants – I know I've heard, you know, obviously the same thing everybody else has heard about being interested in it and being best buds with Mitch Barnhart. I just wonder how much the comfort and the money that you know you have and how many guys are driven to the same level of guys like Rick Pitino. You know what I mean? Like Rick, who literally every he, he went to Greece to go continue coaching the game. Like, how, how many guys are that hungry anymore? And I just wonder, Nate Oates may, or not Nate Oates, Danny Hurley may be one of those guys because he seems like a psychopath, a good a good psychopath when it comes to his just, you know, being all about the, the game, <laughs> if you will. And you felt like you I wrong. think I think Scott Drew's a little bit different than those two. Um mm-hmm. First of all, Hurley, you, you have to ask yourself, why would you leave that job to take Kentucky? And if the only answers are money and a bigger name, well, one, I would argue that UConn's just as big a name as Kentucky right now. UConn over the last 30 years, in my opinion, is the best college basketball program there's been. Yep. You've won championships with multiple different coaches. You have a area in New York City where you can pull NIL from pretty much anywhere. It's a draw in terms of getting kids to an area that they want to, you know, hey, it's it's near New York City. It's not far away. You can hop on the train. Um, you're in a conference that is a rich tradition in basketball, perhaps the richest one in, in college basketball outside of the ACC. So why would he leave that job, especially coming off of back-to-back national championships because – you leave that situation, you're resetting your your entire cachet because Kentucky fans don't care what you did at UConn. If you have a rough first season, you have no runway. If he has a bad season at UConn, UConn fans are not calling for his head. He just won two national championships. Mm-hmm. Nate so Oates is in the same boat. Nate Oates just took Alabama to the Final Four. He is building a program there. If he has a rough year next year, fans are going to go, yeah, well, he took us to the Final Four last year. It's the same thing we did in 2013 – when we missed the tournament, we all said, well, you know, we, we won the title last year. New Orleans Noel got hurt. You know, Ryan Harrow sucked. We'll, we'll be back next year. Nobody was calling for Cal's job. You come in here and you miss the tournament next year. UK fans were like, well, maybe that was just a fluke. Scott Drew, on the other hand, won a title in the COVID year, which some fans discount. I, I understand why. And since then, he's lost to teams he shouldn't have lost to. So he's starting to almost get to that point where Cal was at, you know, 2017, where people are like, well, that title's looking a little far away. By moving to Kentucky, you reset that that runway because now you get a fresh start. You get to move. It's almost like what what Scott Satterfield did, essentially. He knew that he was on the hot seat. Well, now he takes a new job and he's got a brand new start. So I think that's why in terms of the three coaches, he's the one most likely to take the job. On Mitch's side, he's looking at money. Scott Drew's probably not going to cost as much. 
So he, he doesn't have to ask boosters for as much. Two, it's a safe hire for him. He doesn't have to deal with any of the baggage that comes with Oates. He doesn't have to deal with a prolonged discussion to have a coach possibly back out five days from now. And three, it allows him to get a coach in place before Friday's deadline of when the um, dead period ends, which I think is very important here. Mm. If you, you know, I'm not saying that Scott Drew would suddenly change his mind and say no, but if the thing with Hurley drags on two or three days, well, Scott Drew's got a recruiting class down there that he's also got to worry about. And he's got to start making plans for, well, if I don't get this job, I've got to start doing stuff on Friday and Saturday for Baylor. And maybe he does start having second thoughts. And now you're in a pickle because you've lost the guy that you knew was a sure thing. Mitch Barnhart, if we know anything, is not a guy who likes to take risks. That, for me, is why I think Scott Drew is the guy that he was locked in on from the start. If he knew he was going to say yes, he wasn't going to look anywhere else. He'll make a cursory phone call to Hurley, and he'll say, well, I tried. And then he'll go and hire the guy that he wanted to hire all along and say it was his first choice. Yeah. I would say a couple things, though, about that whole thing, that just the, the line of thinking. Number one, um, I, I – I would have said that UConn is a blue blood job. They got six titles, all that kind of stuff, whatever. But then I start. I got into a little Twitter, little back and forth this morning with a fan, and a UConn fan was like, "He's he's not going to leave UConn because he doesn't want the pressure of Kentucky." Um, and by the way, if you've ever met his father, uh, pressure's not an issue with the Hurleys. <laughs> yeah. uh, so at the uh, at the end of the day, though, I said, "Well, isn't UConn a blue blood program?" Because I don't think you can be a blue blood program unless you're getting pressure from the fans. It kind of mm-hmm. is what kind of comes with the with the territory, right? Like if you don't have pressure from the fans, you might have a nice program that's won six titles and it's been very just in the right place at the right time a lot of times. But if you're not getting pressure from the fans and the expectation, the standard is not there for you to be to perform at that level, then you're not a blue blood program. So any one of those coaches right there that doesn't want to have anything to do with the pressure of coaching in Kentucky, move along. You're not our dude. I mean, to me, that just qualifies what your pool is because this job is different. Real, real quick, I think there's a difference between pressure and pressure to come in and win in your first season and get to the second round and have no leeway at all. I think that's the one – differentiating thing to keep in mind there. Yes, he's going to have pressure, but again, it goes back to what I said earlier. If he struggles a bit next year, doesn't, you know, he gets knocked out in the round of 32 or the sweet 16, nobody's calling for his job because he just won two national titles. He comes here and struggles and doesn't get to the round of 30 or, you know, the sweet 16. That pressure immediately builds from a fan base that doesn't care what he did at UConn. That's just my thought on that part. Well, I mean, again, but I think the coach that you want thrives off that. Like I think that they want that they want to be in that place. I mean, they want to be the guy who's go, who is going to go in that environment. I mean, that's they want the expectation. You know, they want the expectation of the great. He has that there. That's mm-hmm. that's the that's Does problem he? for us. If they're if they're going to put up with it, then they don't. I mean, because you look at and the, there was a comment in our thread here that I just happened to catch. Mm-hmm. Like UConn's got six titles, but they've also been wildly inconsistent in that same time in that same time stretch. It's not like. It's like they either get to the final four and win the title, or they've been they miss the tournament, they whatever else. Like at the end of the day, it'd be real interesting to see if UConn, what has gone on at UConn because of the six titles, would be tolerated at Kentucky because of how low the lows are at the same time. Well, what I will say is, and this is kind of like my my big thing about UConn. I've kind of had this. I kind of hate UConn. But the reason is, is like it's never UConn's never been a team like obviously with Rick Pitino that Louisville fans have ever been really afraid of because for the most part they've kind of beaten them. Except for the one thing about UConn is I've never seen a team get luckier. And these last two seasons are not that obviously. No, with Danny not Hurley. That what Danny at all. Hurley is doing is not that. But I've never seen a program luck into championships more than UConn has. Like with 2014, when that, that team that obviously we, we, we don't need to bring up either know, one of those 20, 2011, okay? Either, know, those... either one of them. <laughs> but like it frustrates me because I'm like, UK, seriously, Louisville beat them by 30. How are you losing to that well, team? To be, fair, to be fair, we lost Willie Cauley Stein before that game. You know, that kind of changed things. There's, there's a reason that they kept getting to the rim at will, right? And we couldn't do anything about it. It's because we were missing the. You know, the former uh, high school wide receiver. I didn't know if you guys knew that he played high school football. He played wide receiver in Kansas. 
That's the first time. That's the first time I've ever heard that. You never knew it. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. So I was looking, it's and obviously, water obviously, where UConn was, where he when he came in back in 2018, is vastly they were different. Bad. Right. They were very they were, bad. I forgot how bad, bad UConn. Yeah. And so obviously, I'm looking at his first two seasons: 16, 17, 6, and 12 in conference. 19, 12, 10, 8, finishing ninth and fifth, and then then two seasons in a row finishing third. It, it, it's a slow build, but I think also you look at that time frame from 2018, 2019, and then 2020, and like pre-COVID and post-COVID, right? So since post-COVID, ever since everything with, you know, the extra years that you have, the transfer rules, all that, that's kind of where I feel like he's cleaned up and why he is like the way I view Danny Hurley. And what I don't want, I, as a little bit, I don't want Kentucky to get him because I, I, I'm terrified of that. Because I think Danny Hurley, no matter where he goes, he will win because he is kind of, to me, the new John Calipari. And when I say that, I mean when it comes to like the portal, getting his guys, getting the right can guys to the new Rick system. Pacino. Okay, not the new, the new John Calipari. That's fine. We both Hurley can him. coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's coach. true. That's true. That's fair. But what I mean is like he is going to get the guys that he wants. It's not going to be the you know the one and done guys. It's going to be in a new way, the new way that we're doing it, which is the old way with the older guys. And I feel like he, no matter what. They're gonna fit his system, and he's gonna win no matter where he goes. So that's that's my main thing, and that's where I've just kind of looked at him. I but I don't think it'll take nearly as long taking over this Kentucky team to that. Obviously, it's it is a complete from the floor rebuild, though, right? Because most of those guys, I'm guessing, are expected to either go to the draft or try to follow him. I don't have the roster concerns. I think the roster concerns are kind of the, just the nature of the beast. And at the same time, if the guy, like for example, Scott Drew's got an amazing recruiting class going into Baylor mm -hmm. I, I personally don't like Scott Drew as an option but those guys are going to come with him I mean whoever whoever Kentucky hires when you take a big brand name coach and a big brand name program you're going to get some interest in some way and they're going to be able to piece together something next year um and 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 to, I I actually kind of hope that they do piece together something next year and do make it to the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight next year and be like, come on, Cal, it's not that hard. Let's you know, let's yeah. figure this shit out. Um, I'm assuming we can cuss on this. Is that correct? Yeah, you, yeah, you can cuss. You okay. can say whatever yeah, the fuck cuss. you, <laughs> whatever the fuck you want, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Whatever, <laughs> at the same, so at, I just at the same time, you know, if we're talking about the names we're talking about, and we're talking about Kentucky, they're gonna get kids, and because the NILs there. The brands are there. That's that's not going to be the issue. You know, it's they're they're going to be able to figure out. They're going to get a roster together. We're going to lose dudes, and we're going to find new ones. It's just the way it is. Um, Shane's asking any credence that the boosters have met and put together a major salary and nil deal for Dan. I hope so. I mean, they're going to. I would imagine they give him whatever they need. I, mean, I would imagine salary fine. I don't know what's. <laughs> What's the NIL deal? NIL deal with UK? Is it is it going to completely shift now? Obviously, we've, I've just seen Diener and them talk about you know the however many how, however much money they've raised. The th was it like thirty and fifteen or something like that? But that was with Cal and during that setup of the La Familia. I think, you know, uh, what whatever. do you think? I think the NIL could go up because of this thing. I think if a lot of people yeah, are I, oh want to return on their investment. That, that's what I was going to say. If I'm somebody who's looking to invest my money and get something out of it, I want more than a first weekend exit. So, you know, if, if especially when you consider the fact that none of them had to pony up a single penny to get Cal to leave, mm -hmm. which again, greatest Christmas gift ever. I mean, good God. Um, it, op it opens up a lot more purse strings for these guys. It opens up more willingness to donate some of that money to give some extra cash I don't know that Scott Drew moves that needle for some people, but there's also no doubt that Cal pissed some people off. And there are probably people willing to donate just for the simple fact of what you said earlier of somebody else coming in, doing better than Cal with less, and being able to say, look, dumbass, we barely had to give this guy any extra money and he still outperformed you. He didn't get, you know, five, six McDonald's All Americans. He brought in a couple four stars, a couple five stars, a couple grad transfers, and he got to the second weekend, and you couldn't do it. If if giving an extra you know quarter million dollars helps to get them to that, to where they can thumb their nose at Cal and laugh at him as he misses the tournament and is stuck in Podunk, Arkansas, where there's no Italian restaurant worth a damn within fifty miles, My own. they're gonna do it. 
Have you been, have either of you ever been to Fayetteville, Arkansas? Yeah. No, I, it's I, a, yeah I've never driven past it. It's all it is Like you have to hard time to get there, right? Because it's all you should do when it comes to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Right. It I've is the Little Rock. Mm -hmm. But Fayetteville is like far western part of the state, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not near Little Rock. No, there's, I mean, uh, the majority of Arkansas, there's nothing. Like, I right. used to have to go to El Dorado, Arkansas all the time. There's nothing out there. Why, why would you go to Arkansas? Are you For investigating what? somebody? It was, it was, it was, an, it was a PI job. Like, I can't, I can't right, talk right. about it. <laughs> it was, it was. In your dog in Arkansas? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. 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 I'm not getting out of my car. Yeah, bro. Pee in the, pee in the jug, do whatever I got to do. You know, check on, uh, this is back when Bobby Petrino was there. You know, got to check in on him, see what he's doing. <laughs> Oh, wait, I don't know go. who I, I a friend of mine texted me that photo the other night. My phone is still getting notifications because I guess people think I created that. I don't have that kind of Photoshop skill. <laughs> I need to find out who the hell put Cal's face on Bobby Petrino in the neck brace because they deserve a standing ovation. It's one of the best Photoshops really I've ever seen. Because the first time I saw it, just glancing at my phone, I thought it was Bobby Petrino. I'm like, what nope. are you sending? Oh, wait. It's so well done. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Slackavelli is not happy with the <laughs> disgracing of uh, Fayetteville. Since it's actually a great college city, y'all are hilarious. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a because all fan. He on, on, last on, night. Time out, time out. Did you just use the word city? Yeah. <laughs> I think city is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. it's. I will say this. I mean, I used to think, like, Arkansas kind of is what I expected. When I went to I, now, now that I'm every basic white family going down to Destin with my kids uh, for spring break or whatever, uh, going down there, we always stop in like Birmingham and Alabama. Alabama is much different than I expected. I expected anything. Any, any, I'm sure there's plenty of that, but out, Birmingham, Alabama is beautiful. There's a lot of great stuff out there. I get the. I'll say this, and again, take <laughs> take my L1C4 card or whatever you want to say. You get down in the SEC country and UK. It's not the same. Lexington is not the same, but the rest of SEC country, I get it. I can, I understand all of it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm slowly becoming rummage with with how he loved up Tennessee and all that. I can see it when you get down to like Alabama and you know those schools. I, I get it. It's just part of the culture. Anyway, proceed with your with your From next Fayette coach. County to Fayetteville. There you go. <laughs> My Fayetteville slander. <laughs> so. Uh. No, I, I just, mean, I, I, again, it, the whole thing to me is just so hilarious that it's not just that he was forced to take another job. It's that he's forced to go to Fayetteville freaking Arkansas because he didn't play this properly. Like if he if he does this and he goes to, you know, to Tennessee or something or he goes to LSU, like, a you know, a better location. He literally went to maybe the second word. I'd probably put Starkville below it. And that's about it. Like of all the SEC is definitely who could try to do this, he went to the second worst one. <laughs> Columbia, South Carolina is pretty shitty too, though. But it's, at least it's in South Carolina. Just Columbia as a whole is kind of shitty. Close enough to good places. There's yeah. nothing near Fayetteville worth the damn. Yeah. Um, I I find it. Uh, let's go back to the Truly Donovan thing because, like that whole deal. If and I do think there's legs to it. Like I don't know if it's exactly the way it was told on Trilly Donovan's the way it really played out, but how disconnected do you have to be to think that you actually might get a raise out of this whole deal? <laughs> well, no, I don't think it was that he thought he was going to get a raise. From the way I understand he, it, he wanted a counter offer. To resign. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what was, was going to make Mitch resign there? To resign and Dwayne Peavy was going to become athletic director. How, but the way to get Mitch to resign would be to get him to deny him the, the his counter offer or whatever that he wanted, right? I mean, how how do you power play like, that? Yeah, like how who's who's gonna back him up for that? Is it were the fans supposed to do that in that instance? Did he expect that they would love him? Because no, I think if you've been on I think social media, boosters. yeah, I think, I think he, he thought, thought the boosters were, and there may be certain boosters mm -hmm. that are in his corner. I think he thought that he had enough goodwill still with people. Mm -hmm. that because remember everything we see on twitter is only 10 15 percent of of you know if that if any, that any group he thought he had enough goodwill built up and enough love in this fan base and in these boosters that he could whip it out and actually win a a pissing or measurement contest whichever acronym you want to go with 
-hmm. He completely misplayed this. And again, it is no secret that Dwayne Peavy wants this job. Dwayne Peavy hasn't taken a better job other than DePaul for a reason. He wants the Kentucky Athletic Director's job. Mitch Barnhart's not going to leave that job anytime soon. Yeah. I can completely well, also, see this happening. What also does Dwayne Peavy done at DePaul to get him a better job? Exactly. I mean, at the same time, like I – I got, I got to know him just a little bit, not very well, but he's a, he's an incredible guy. But the, at the same time, like this whole plot that was un, uh, that was played out on the Trilly Donovan thing, to me is is so just out of touch of reality of what could of what he thought was going to happen. And I got to hand it, man. If Barnhart literally had the balls to sit there and say, "Man, you you f this thing up," because now you're out of here, we don't have to pay you a buyout you're either going to take this Arkansas job or we're firing you, uh, which basically, you know, was uh, triggered Cal's resignation today. Uh, I, I just think that, I mean, how out of touch do you have to be and kudos to Mitch Barnhart for calling the bluff and being like, see you dude. Like you're one way or another. Now you're out of here. Yeah. Good point. Thank, thank you to Brian. Uh, you guys, if you're in here right now, like the damn video. Like the fucking video. That's all we ask. If you go over to YouTube, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to do a lot more content and stuff on there. Like the video, Time out, all that stuff. Uh-oh. Time out. Breaking news. Oh, Matt what we Jones got? Jones and Blank are fighting with each other. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. Let's drop go. everything. Okay. <laughs> Can we get a, a dramatic reading? What, what do you got for us, sense? Let's see. Blank, no. He's, he's, he's reading. He's oh, retweeting oh, no. Blankenbaker's poll from March 9th. Louisville fans, who do you want to be the coach of Louisville basketball? 72% chose Scott Drew. Oh no. Oh no. What did what did oh what did he um what did Blank say? Did I Blank say to, something to him before that? Or did he just well, tweet no, that? That's, out? What, that's what I'm checking next. I need to see if the sheriff is uh okay. has been firing off. It's, oh no. No, it looks like he hasn't. So so Matt's just Unabated, just taking a shot at Blank, the sheriff, and not even tagging him because he's too much of a coward. But you know, <sighs> that's kind of—I don't know. I kind of well. I, I guess my question I feel is like somebody should tag Blank and let him know. Okay, so is that? Hmm. Is that? I guess is that a just trying to like? I don't know. Get people on the Scott Drew train, like like oh we we got him. Louisville didn't get him. Is that what he's doing, or what is no, he doing? I think it's him. I think it's him doing what he does and trying to antagonize U of L fans that are, you know, giving you about you're giving UK credit or crap. I can't mm -hmm. talk tonight. You're giving good. UK crap for not getting their first or second choice. I mean, that's just or, part of the game. I mean, that's, that's literally what this is. I, I don't know. Okay. I love I that Louisville know. won it. Scott drew. And it seems like Kentucky's settling for Scott drew. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that's accurate. I think, well, no matter what, and that's what I was about to go to as well. Say for some reason Kentucky were to go to Scott Drew, and he for some reason decides I just I just love it in Baylor. I love it at Baylor. I get to have my own church. I can do whatever you know, all all that good stuff. Say he wants to stay, even at that level. And again, I'm, I'm not. I, I just I don't do the Louisville Louisville's great. You know, I don't I don't battle like that. I, I I'm reasonable, even at that level. UK's next tier down would still be what Bruce Pearl. I mean, like, wouldn't I? Don't think we're doing that. I, I mean, I'd be surprised if he goes to someone of that age. But mm -hmm. okay, and Andrew know. has had a show cause in the past. Is so is Barnhart going to do the kind of like the Josh Hurd thing, which is just like I'm not touching anybody who's had any kind of history at all, like like how he didn't want to touch John well, Calipari before and all that. Let's look at who he is. He's a guy that right. hired a, a coach who was a complete drunk. He didn't want to have anything to do with Calipari because of the stigma around him. He had to be forced the second time around to actually talk to him. Um, he won't let UK fans have alcohol unless they're rich. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a guy who is, you know, bought, he's, he's, he, his faith means a lot to him. He's very by the book. He's very straight and narrow. He is not the kind of guy who wants a coach, especially after what he's dealt with with Cal, that's going to be anything but a yes man. Does Bruce Pearl strike you as a yes man? Oh, hell no. Or somebody who's not going to cause issues or possibly say something that 
to bring the school some controversy. I mean, it's Bruce Pearl. We like Bruce Pearl because he's Bruce Pearl. Cal or Barnhart wants somebody who is not going to be Cal, who is going to fall in line and, you know, say the right things and do the right things. That matters to him more than anything. Well, then there's the, and lies a problem then because at the end of the day, like the job is so big that you can, and you're the person's going to be in the spotlight so much that you're, you know, it's, it will work against you to have someone who's not a willing to have a little bit of, of character, not character as far as like them being a character, not necessarily moral character. Uh, you know, that, if they're not a little bit of a, of that kind of like, wise guy person who's gonna maybe spout out every once in a while who's a little bit entertaining and whatever else and you don't really know what to expect i mean that's kind of part of the show that you want to get at kentucky i mean at the end of the day like uh vanilla doesn't really fly here too well you know i mean we know how important that this basketball position is i mean let's face it the three of us could be here in the middle of july doing a college basketball thing on twitter and Mm -hmm. or on espn louisville plus and we would still have 1500 people because that's what it is here and at the end of the day, that's what got, I mean, that's one of the things that probably got Kenny Payne a really short leash besides just not winning, but that he was the worst coach of all time. Ever. He's the worst coach of all time, but he was, was absent. He was vacant. He was <laughs> never. There's one thing in particular that got him a really short <laughs> leash. What's up for him? But seriously, like how annoying as a, as a loyal fan, like for you all to not hear anything from your college basketball coach, like not even like you don't hear like he's out yeah. doing this, he's out doing that, he's not going to the microphone. The exact opposite of what you're getting with what with PK well, right now, right? Why, why do you think so many people have like flipped and like even me, who is you know I've been angry and I've been having to you know I've gotten talk to about my tweets and stuff like that about me being too negative and do whatever. But like I, even me, I, I listen to him and I'm like, this is refreshing as fuck. Like to have yeah. a guy who, and literally like you have uh, Zach Greenwell or who, uh, whatever tweeting out we're he wants to be on every platform. We'll try to get him there. Like Kenny Payne never would do that. Like I understand people like Rick Pitino, Cal Perry, not doing it because you don't gotta, you've already earned who you are. But like Kenny Payne did earn shit and he never made an effort. So just it's refreshing. You're like, oh, I kind of I kind of love this guy now because he's doing all the things that we just expect him to do. Now, when the season starts and if they don't win games, we'll see. But well, you know. here, here's my question to you. When Chris Beard was winning, did that matter that he wasn't out there and outgoing and, and you know, being active with the media and active with fans? No, because right. you're winning games. When Tubby wasn't doing that stuff, did UK fans care when we were winning games? No, because we were winning games. At the end of the day, if you win games, none of this other shit matters. Mm-hmm. None of this other shit matters to the donors who are who he has to go get money from. At the end of the day, the fans are not giving money other than buying tickets. And you know what sells tickets? A winning Wait. team. Wait. That Wait. is what Mitch, Mitch knows and, and cares about. Because here's the other thing. Mark Stoops isn't that guy. Mm-hmm. He raises plenty of money. Mark Stoops is as milk toast as it gets. He's on when he's on the sideline, he does the little badger face and he gets mad. But off the field, he's as boring. He's as coach speak as it gets. He still brings in money because he wins. Mm-hmm. He may not win as much as some of us like. But the other thing he doesn't do is he doesn't rub people the wrong way, aka the crafts. Cal rub the crafts the wrong way. That for me is why Scott Drew makes sense to them because I'm not trying to bring politics into this, but we all know where Cal stands on some issues. Yeah. He doesn't align with people like the crafts. Scott drew does. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be any possibility in Mitch's mind of, of any kind of abrasion, any kind of saying the wrong thing to piss them off, because I guarantee you the crafts have not been giving as much money to the basketball program as they have the football program in the last few years. And that feeds back into our previous discussion about NIL money. And that uh that you know they're run, trying to run for governor too so yeah so got some funds um I voted for <laughs> but my guy my guys why do we Kentucky fans had to I'm have, not trying to bring politics into that <laughs> but I did but we're just, and I, I'm not gonna tell you who I voted for <laughs> put your MAGA hat on uh why do we have to have the big name almost never works out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. And I, I mean, I've said things mm-hmm. like this before, like going after the pers- the right person who's hungry, just like Louisville did, right? We yeah. don't know if Louisville's tire is going to work out or not. There's no question that that dude's hungry. Yeah. Right? 
And I would take hungry over complacent any day. At the end of the day, when we look back at these 15 years, hungry cow that came in 2009, 2010 mm-hmm. was awesome. Complacent cow, not what we wanted. Right. When he, for, I'm not saying that job in February cow was even worse. Well, that's even worse. <laughs> but there I was, just, I mean, and there's no question of the, of the change, right? I mean, we talk about swaggy cow and not swaggy cow and all that stuff. And yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of going after someone who's <laughs> young and upcoming and maybe a little off the radar and, but it's shown that it's a great fit for the university and the dude's hungry and he can coach basketball. I mean, I, I don't hate that. Uh, was it peanut peanut butter posse or whatever the dude was? <laughs> I was I was <laughs> nervous about that name. I wasn't sure exactly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> big names are de- I mean, honestly like in a lot of ways. In some ways, that's well, the, the trap that Kentucky football was like. Let's go get the uh, the reti- the the dude who needs to retire. To, you know, the Bill Curry's mm-hmm. that had success somewhere else, and try yeah. to bring him into Kentucky and see if we can continue that too. But. It doesn't. It doesn't really work out a lot of times because that person's had their career. They want to kind of ride it out. Um, and let's face it: in college basketball today, it takes a ton of energy for mm-hmm. you to do it at the level that you really need to do it at. There's something to be said for obviously. Um, we talked about with North Carolina and Duke hiring former player assistants. I hate that. I hate just doing. Well, obviously Kenny Payne. But it was before Kenny Payne. Like, I I mean, sorry to do the soccer thing. And, you know, Andrea Pirlo coming to Juventus. They probably should have given him time. But I, I hated that, too. I, <laughs> I hated – I hate any times that because, obviously, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But also, it just seems very – it just seems almost, like, too easy. Like, you're just, oh, we, it just feels good. Let's do that. Let's see if it works out. I'd rather you go hire somebody who's unaffiliated, wants to – like you said, hungry. But I guess what I pivot to – is say for some reason Kentucky it doesn't get a Scott Drew or somebody like that even. Who 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 would be a guy that you look to right now that is a young hungry guy that you would want to see them go after? I'm not allowed to say um, my pick because I get laughed at every time and it wouldn't be a guy. So Oh I No, and it's an awful and it's an awful it's an awful point. It's not, it is an awful, <laughs> it's awful point. It is not an awful point. It shows Just me how me. little you know about girls about women's basketball and how good of a coach she is and who she is to even say that it is not coach. I, she what, would, okay, what I did hear that she, yes. would, she would be a hundred percent successful at kentucky i'm telling no, you right she now wouldn't. dude i just mike, 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 tell me this. mike answer me this what um high school boys coach does she have relationships with what aau uh boys coach does she have relationships she with plenty of Relationships with the shoe companies, Adidas, wherever that she has relationship with. This is a it, she is a phenomenal coach. She would, but it is she would, do, she would get it to her profession to think it's the same thing with you and and Lou said this about- on our show earlier today. It was perfect. It was the same thing as certain U of L fans saying, "Well, well, Jeff Wall should just come and take." No, it's a completely different job. It yeah. is the things that you have to manage in a men's locker room with a men's and, team are completely different than what you have to manage with a women's team. And at I that totally age, agree that with ninety nine percent of them, except for Don Staley. Uh, and then, but if you've listened to our show in the past of who I would like, it would be Todd Golden. That's the guy who's kind of off the wall for me that I would really like to have. He's off the wall. Todd but Golden he's- may not have a job in a week, so that's what we're hearing about that too. That's that's going to be something to kind of watch to see what happens there if there's mm-hmm. any legs to that story. So. We've already been down that road with with co-eds and everything again. Yeah, we don't need that. The Don Staley take is interesting to me. I just, again, I I understand what you're saying because obviously whatever she does, it works. But there is a bit of that. I mean, these are eight, you know, 18, 19 year old boys. Men, we call them men, but they're you're still a boy at that age, really. I think about me at eighteen, nineteen, and how, like you said, in a locker room, it's iffy. It's 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 a weird. It's a weird situation to kind of put that in. Does that make? I don't know. Like I would imagine. You're you're saying, right. but I'm just saying this. When you're talking about the drop off that happens after that top tier, yeah. like you were talking about Josh freaking shirts. Okay. Yeah. I'll take Don Staley over that. Don't you tell Any Nick Valvano that. Week. Don't you tell Nick Valvano okay, well, that. Let me ask you this: What high school basketball player incoming in this class has Don Staley ever talked to? If you well, let's let's just throw everything on the table and say, and again, let's just as Bob likes to say, let me grant you your argument. <laughs> sure. You hired Don Staley. Sure. Who does she call this weekend to recruit? 
that she's built a relationship Whoever the hell with. she wants, man. I'm, I'm, she's got more relationships no, on the men's side than finish. you think she does. Let me finish. You asked me the question. You asked me the school, question. If I'm a high school boys basketball player and I'm a top 50 recruit, I've heard from all these other coaches. I may not know who Don Staley is. If I I'm disagree in, with that. You and I know who – no, Mike – you and I know who Don Staley is because we're old enough and we watch sports. 18-year-old boys who are top talents in basketball are not sitting around watching women's basketball most nights. They're out having fun with their friends or doing whatever their 18-year-olds do. You were that age. I was that age. They don't know who Don Staley is other than a passing cursory, oh, yeah, she won the title. They don't know what kind of a coach yeah, she is. Just, they don't know her system. They've never had a relationship with her. Why would they suddenly on Friday or Saturday say, oh, well, let me talk to this person I've never talked to before and I don't know anything about. You I, would be putting UK in a situation where they have to rebuild and they have to try to go out and get lesser talent than what they're going to get now from a coach who's actually – this guy's got recruits that he can bring with him. There are players at UK that are committed who know who he is. They will listen to a phone call. They who are you, ta who, who is he? Who are you talking about? Reply. Who are you talking about? Scott Drew. I don't, no, no, but we're not. That wasn't his question. Yeah, it was. His, but I'm, his question but was if we struck is, out. But my point is any coach that you bring in has talked to male recruits okay. who could come to UK. So back to my question. You'd rather have Josh Shirts come to the UK than Don Staley? I would rather have somebody come in who can bring uh, recruits. Answer to the question, Ince. And to I, answer the I question. Your question. That's the drop off we're talking question. about here. We're talking about going from it's like not the drop off, but it's not there's the drop. a there huge drop off that we can talk to. You're keying in on one person because you no. have this idea that everybody else at the station has told you is not a valid idea. There are there are less than one percent of one percent of one percent who agree with you on this. Uh, I, I actually, that's not true. I've seen people actually agree with me on this. And, Number two, and she's got more. Ince, Ince, you Ince, you've talked. You've that talked. She would want to do that in the she first did. place. There's plenty. She has plenty of relationships in the basketball community where she could go recruit. I have no doubt about it. She she would have no. I, and all I'm saying is that his original question, Sofro's original question, is if we missed out on no. that top tier, and you had to go down, who would you want to go get? And it, you can go get the person who just rebuilt a total roster and went undefeated in the most competitive women's basketball season of all time, the most watched women's basketball season of all time, and go out and take that person, or you can take the head coach at Indiana State. I mean, it is it is you're such a drop-off, that top tier, that to the next year. to coach men's basketball, first and foremost, which again oh. goes back to the whole discussion we just had about why would Dan Hurley take a conversation about something that's never going to happen anyway, right? the South Carolina job doing the things <laughs> that you just mentioned? She just won a national title. She just built up a roster. She's at she the top. She literally talked about how she almost retired last year because of it. She wants a different challenge. She wants She's a different challenge. Okay, being the coach at Kentucky is not that challenge. Again, this is a moot point. To answer Justin's original question, I honestly don't, don't know. There at least are... I gave you an answer, Sofro. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed this. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> I, I don't Donovan, get to do this again. The Donovan thing doesn't make sense to me. Um, that's not, a, that's not a nice tear down. That's not a tear down. I think he's just working For through. Me it is. Oh. For me, it is. He has not coached in college basketball in a decade. He does not have those relationships, again, with recruiting high school kids. He's never built a roster in this kind of environment. When he left college basketball, if you transferred, you had to sit out a year. There was no paying players. These are issues that have to be looked at because, again, you cannot come into this job and not succeed year one. That's the we stuff he deals with every day in the NBA, though. So, yeah, I'm definitely talking a little bit more of, like, the, the, the Pat Kelsey, who the fuck is that hire? <laughs> right, <laughs> like that kind of. I was that with you of, on that. That's kind of what I look at it, and you know, I, I would you put Iowa State. Would you put Iowa State's coach in that in that tier? It would be TJ Hushmanzada. Hushmanzada was a wide receiver for the uh, freaking Bengals. Oh, what's <laughs> it? Olo Fable, thank the golfer. Thank you for explaining the joke, there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second, Eva. It did, I appreciate it. it. Took me a second. Um, the joke, Mike. You think about the guy who's not going to leave an area because of his wife. That dude's not going anywhere because of his wife. So he's not. He's not leaving it. Seriously, that, she, that is who I she's so tired. I would say. So, 
uh, did you did you ask if uh, was it TJ Olson whatever is that who you're saying Olson Van yeah what's it, what is his last name yeah his Olsen, name either that's Olson Berger <laughs> Olson Schneider I don't know it's it's it'd be fun to try to figure out um I think early on in the season I would have considered that but well and they kind of flamed out in the tournament yeah, outside of that though say it again Olson Berger Olson Berger. Um, do you have any other stats in front of you now that you pulled up his name? <laughs> like, do you I have got, any? Yeah, yeah. I, you got, me, I got him. Give me, is this his first season at Iowa State or has they, he been there? I, I could be completely wrong, but didn't they lose a player third right season. before the tournament? They may I have. Know. I don't follow Iowa State nearly close, <laughs> close enough. I'm not outside I'm of not Jack like Grossman. Lost somebody either in the first game or they lost him right before the tournament. And Jack Grossman, if you're watching, you know the link. <laughs> let us, let us know. <laughs> like, you know the link. Just let us know. Um, uh, he's it's his third season at Iowa State. Okay, okay, seventy and thirty-five overall. He's made it to the and those three seasons gone to the Sweet Sixteen twice. So, so he probably, yeah. I mean, that's he, it. He, he won the Big Twelve and what I view as like one of the best Big Twelves we've had in a while, right? Outside of Kansas, yeah. kind of being being crap. Um, I mean, I'm impressed by that. So yeah, no, that would be one that I guess I would count it, but it's still he's still. <laughs> Definitely a tier above what what and, and I, I view Pat Kelsey. I wouldn't, call it flaming, I wouldn't call it flaming out losing to Illinois in the Sweet Sixteen. Did he, right. did he lose to a team less than him? Yes, but I'm pretty sure that was not I lose a two losing to three is not a flame out. It's mainly because I picked him to go a little farther just because just face up. So I'm angry. I'm just angry because my bracket was shit. So that, that's what that's what it was. Um, <laughs> so let's I mean let's go ahead and let's actually just let's let's address the the elephant in the room. And I apologize that y'all, I'm sure you talked about it yesterday. This is fun, by the way, having you who can facilitate this conversation. The reason why I would be interested in him, he beat Houston twice. And not only did he beat Houston twice, he beat him by 28 in the Big 12 title game. And he's, yeah. not, he's not going anywhere. Well, that, and yeah, that was the, yeah, okay, yeah, that's why I was all in. Yeah, that's why I bought in on Iowa State, because I thought it was going to be UConn, Houston, like everybody kind of did. But then... I don't know. I guess that's what happened. He also, by the way, he also, by the way, beat Scott Drew okay. by fourteen in the semifinal of that tournament. So true. I, yeah, true. I did watch that because I'm trying. To, yeah. I forgot. I thought. We were I understand maybe, yeah. the situation that Scott Drew took over at Baylor after that kid got murdered and all that stuff, and it was a terrible situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were they were they were awful though. His first four years, right? I yeah. mean, awful. It took them a long freaking time to get to the point where they were. And if you take out that national championship season and then that. And take out those four terrible years. So I'll take out one national championship season because I think it's a little bit of an anomaly in those four terrible years. Scott Drew is a very average coach. That's all I'm going to say. It does not excite me at all. I, I no. you know, I'll get on board. I'll accept it. Whatever else, but mm-hmm. I'm not. It is not a, a thing that he, excites me at all. Again, it goes back to Mitch Barnhart. Mitch Barnhart yeah. is somebody who wants a safe pick. He will get us to the tournament. He will. He may not take us any further than Cal did, which means it's more of the same. But he won't bring the same issues that Cal brought off the mm-hmm. court of antagonizing boosters, antagonizing fans, and more importantly, antagonizing the absolute ever-loving shit out of the media. Mm-hmm. That is something we haven't talked about, and it's very important because the whole thing of Kentucky is for years. You know, when I was growing up, media adulation, everything UK did, the media loved them. And if you didn't, you didn't get access. Well, Cal pissed every single damn one of them off. And then, you know, he goes out and beats Auburn and he he gets up on his high horse and then goes out and loses the next game and doesn't want to talk to the media. Mm -hmm. That relationship was as toxic as any. You bring in a guy like Scott Drew who is not going to antagonize the media, they're not going to be as mean to him if he loses in the round of 32 as they were to Cal. They're not going to go out and call for his job and say, well, you know, you're you're a smart ass and – this and that and the other. Kyle Tucker's not going to write takedown pieces on him yep. the way that he did with Cal. Yeah, the quizzing of the media did piss me off, even as a you know a rival fan watching it. It just it made no sense to me why he had to do that. All the, you know, every time. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys. So, and I, okay, I, how far down do you get until Rick Pitino's a name that actually is serious, or is it not even going to be considered because of the Louisville stuff? I, it's not it has nothing to do with the little stuff. I would, I don't think it has anything to do with the little stuff. I I would love it, but mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's going to happen. But and so well, lo- first of all, the man has a Louisville tattoo, so it's a non-starter for me <laughs> because 
<laughs> no, because look, you're asking you're asking the same question that we just went through with you guys, where you hired a former UK assistant yeah. coach. Yeah, well, that, okay, that's different, man, though. That is different. Time, man, the last image I have of the man in Rupp Arena was him flipping off a UK fan. No, I do not want him as our head coach. Man, but he's still, he's always yeah. loved up UK. It's called, he called it Camelot. I mean, to me, he is, you you haven't softened at all? I know everybody else has softened no, on listen, him. I have We're not where we are right now, but it's not Rick Pitino. welcome back at Rupp Arena anytime. Yeah. He can come yeah. be the Y. He can come sit <laughs> the y. Just not in the chair right next to the scorer's table. Yeah, I, I I just thought that one that would be I don't know how I would feel like obviously personally doing this stuff it would be great it'd be great content but as a fan that that would hurt like it would hurt like I, I would feel like how you felt the first time around like just to see well, him go back to Camelot you know we we had, we had a buffer that was you know he went to the pros yeah well we've had some buffers. He's had some. <laughs> he's had a few buffers. buffers. He's had, yeah, that, he's had a, a buffer. He called him. With he's had a buffer, yeah. a fluffer. He's had a couple. Yeah, of things. He had a, he had a buffer at Porcini's. <laughs> um, I would I would say the most likely like, and I've, if you've heard me, and I'm sure a lot of these people have already heard me, but the most likely Patino connection person, which is not a direct Patino connection, that is a realistic person is Sean Miller. So that that is the person that if uh, if you wanted to go down the line, that's got mm -hmm. some Patino roots from some of the guys that Sean Miller learned from Ralph Willard, Herb Sendak. Uh, that's the, probably the most likely candidate to have any kind of Patino connection whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, it, is there any consideration there? Like, I mean, he's been kind of bad since he's been at back at Xavier, right? I don't think so. Maybe, I I mean, know, maybe underwhelming, uh, maybe not bad. Maybe underwhelming is what I'm looking at, but let me okay. Let, let's let's pull it up. <laughs> Let me look at it. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. I mean, I know they didn't make the tournament this year. I think the Big East got screwed in a lot of ways in the yeah. selection Sunday, but uh, and they they were they had a losing record this year. But his first year back, they were 27 and 10, and they made it the uh, Sweet 16. So that's true. Uh, yeah. He had an off year last year. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we got some sort of history with him. Although he's never made it to, he never made it to a Final Four, right? Yeah, Final Four. So uh, I think my issue. As a fan, is when I hear we're, we're you know we're going through the discussion of all these different names, and I've kind of had the same feeling. I, I talked with Strebel about it when it came to like Scott Drew, of being like my personal opinion is yeah UK can get Scott Drew, but I, I similar to how you were talking about in the early beginning of his career where like I just don't think he can win quick enough to to appease UK fans, and I don't think it'll it'll turn around quick enough. Similar to that, you mean, I think you mean most, win two games in the SCD tournament and get to the second round, second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Okay, that's all. Maybe, I'm happy maybe should I be happy with one win in the SEC tournament? That's fair. Right maybe now. if that's all you care about, maybe yeah, yeah, Saturday, maybe, Saturday, maybe <laughs> Sunday. That, that's what we want. Okay, maybe maybe that's fair. But I think can the majority have, have two post game shows in the SEC tournament, please. <laughs> that's true. Okay, that's fair. I, but majority of these guys I look at and I'm like. How much better do I think? Do I think many of them can really do that much better than Cal? Like all, to be honest, like I, I honestly, well, and I even sat today driving Cal around. Are you and I'm talking like, about though? Which Cal are you talking about? That's this is the distinction, and you had that up there that you know people are saying you're all going to regret getting rid of Cal. Yeah, the 2000, the first seven years of Kentucky Cal ain't coming back. Right, he was never coming back. This Cal Perry that we had that we've had the last four seasons is not capable of making it to the final four. Mm -hmm. And if the ultimate goal is national championships, I don't think John Calipari could have done that at Kentucky. He very well might get it done at Arkansas. It might be great for him to rejuvenate all that other kind of stuff. It was not going to happen at Kentucky. I, I don't think so because of the fact that I don't think he had any intention of taking this job. Mm -hmm. And again, you go back and watch that video earlier it, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm in a situation where I'm in hell, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm I'm looking for a new job, but my job is absolutely killing me, and you know, I've got a I've got a huge project due in March that is vitally important, and I'm sitting there in February looking for another job, yeah. and then I get another job when I sit down to film the video to say bye, or I sit down to do the exit interview, mm -hmm. I'm in a good mood. I'm relieved. Did that man look relieved to you today? He looked like he was in misery. 
Mm-hmm. And the only way you're in that kind of situation when you get out of a miserable situation is because you just put yourself in another miserable situation. Yep. I don't know if it's a miserable situation. I mean, Arkansas is the second best job in the SEC. It's not even close. And I mean, that is a fan base that is just incredibly good. They got, and he's got NIL money. Living in Fayetteville might suck. But I mean, it's an opportunity there that he can actually, where they can be successful. They've been successful in the past. Uh, you know, it's, it's it not, is a top talking, twenty-five job. His ego, he has an ego the size of this job. Mm-hmm. It, Arkansas. Well, he wasn't going to get the job at Kansas or, or UCLA or Indiana. Oh, I mean, he could have gone UCLA a couple years ago, but I mean, he he was not getting those jobs, right? It would have been funny you, if he would have taken an Indiana job. But that's my that point. He wasn't going to go take another job. Okay, he was he, trying. To, this is a power play. He had no intention of taking another job. He was either going to get thirty-three million, or he was going to be back at Kentucky. Now hmm. he's going to Arkansas, and again, if he wasn't planning to go to Arkansas, and he kind of got forced to go to Arkansas when he thought he was coming back to UK, mm-hmm. he might he might turn it around at some point down you know later in the summer. But right now, he looks utterly miserable. And based on every report, he was desperately trying. If you're looking forward to that Arkansas job, you're not desperately trying to get out of the Arkansas job. Yeah. Do you think he could have won? Yeah. At Kentucky, thirty-three million dollars on the table. He's probably he absolutely in hell right now. Do you think he could have won another one at Kentucky? No, no, because That's... again, he had this team, and he was looking for another job in February. Right. He had no this desire to do this anymore. Is... Yeah. I mean, well, that <sighs> that ruins my question. I was going to ask because if he was trying to get out, I was like, did he reach out to Louisville? Did he ever? Did he ever reach out to see if he could go there? Because that would be fantastic. I'd take him. I'd take him. You would have taken him. Yeah, I would absolutely take Cal. Ray. Look oh, where the Louisville has been. Just, you Look would take him been. after you guys literally just spent four months. I would have loved how, it. Why the hell did we hire a former Kentucky coach to our program? Well, it's different. I know. For, uh, no, it's different. It's it's Kenny. I didn't say that. I said, why the hell did you hire Kenny Payne? Who's had no? Who's had no? You know, head coaching experience. Who I, I can go. You know, I've been ranting in this for two and a half years now. But like Cal, I would have taken him. He would have gotten some good recruits, and Louisville would have maybe made the tournament. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot better than where we've been. That's fine. You're at this point. The best I part. wish I, the- what I beg for is I just want to be able to have that that fire again. I want to have that rivalry fire again where I, where I can get up for it because I last time I've done it was I don't know what I guess the overtime Chris game Chris Mack overtime that one <laughs> probably I, I think that's got to be it. So I need you to I need you to go and cut you saying the last time you did it was the Chris <laughs> Mack game. <laughs> Last time I got it up, yeah. Okay, give me, give me, let me mark um, this. Yeah, you're, you're missing what would have been the greatest part of of Cal going to U of L. It would have been watching Mark Blankenbaker have to do a complete 180 and Steve Romich have to do a complete 180 and start praising Cal and and talking about how it was a great hire. Well, that's he right. that's true. Well, Romich has already done the 180. It's it's he did it this uh, Monday and it's 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 ten minutes. I can see though. Dude, oh, Pat Kelsey, right? Yes. Oh no, 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 no. Well, I thought no, you were going to say when you guys hired Scott Sutterfield. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, he, he did. He's done it. For, he's done a little private show for every single one of them. But actually, it's not even private. But it, it he did it for Cal on Monday, so it'll be in the mixtape. If you, if you listen, okay. it'll, it'll right. be in there. He he loved up some Cal now. Like Arkansas is his second team because of course. What if Kentucky, what if Kentucky did go hire Pat Kelsey? <laughs> 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 Romich and Maven would have opened their show laughing and they would still be laughing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, just been two, it would have just been two straight weeks of laughing nonstop. He'll just pivot again and then, yeah. We're, we're, I thought we're, it was God's house, but it turns there. out. <laughs> maybe at that point, I, I don't know who they would go, who they would hire at that point. But yes, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, right, I, I don't. I just personally, I would have. T- I, yes, I would take Cal. That, that's all. I would. Yes, I would be more than happy with Cal right now because I don't have aspirations of titles right now. I have aspirations of not a dead program. That's all I got. That's that's all. That's all I can ask for. Uh, but you all, you all have a little bit more uh, to look forward to. Let me see if there's a couple Sounds more. Sounds to me like you've been jealous of the Kentucky basketball program for the last decade. You know, I, I've been jealous of every program for the last two years. Like every program that's been, you know. 
average. <laughs> like I've been jealous of that. Even even probably like you can look at Boston College a couple of years. I think last year they have an average season. I think well, it was one of the last two seasons. I was jealous of that because that's what that's what I've been doing with. This is not a Louisville stream though. I'm not trying to make it just about Louisville, but you feel free to hate on them. Um, no, it's not. That. I mean, I think at the same time, like, our, and I've said this several times, when Louisville struggles really started, it's when Cal kind of lost his competitive edge. You, you know, I mean, I think it goes hand in hand. See, you that's know? funny. I don't, that's funny. My t sorry, just, my take has been the opposite of that. Of as soon as Louisville struggles happened, when Rick Pitino left, is when Cal stopped caring because he didn't have Rick Pitino to drive him every day. Is what I, that I, was my take when I started with Strebel and Andy. No, uh, there's some truth to that, stopped, though. He stopped caring when he got a lifetime contract. Yeah, it's 2019, and then yeah. then PV left right after that, and then mm -hmm. it was all downhill. PV PV's role at Kentucky was probably more critical than we'll ever ever really realize. And 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 on that point, and this is something I, I texted Strebel the other day that we haven't really talked about, and and it sucks to have to talk about because it. It's personal to a lot of us. There's two aspects of this that we also haven't discussed that is very important with how ugly things got the last two years and how quickly they got there. Mm -hmm. John Calipari in 2022 lost Joe B. Hall in January and he lost Mike Pratt in June. And I don't think that's talked about enough because he talked about repeatedly how both of those men were vitally important to him. One, taking the job. And two, being people that he could talk to mm -hmm. and get advice from and vent to. But they were also buffers, especially Mike. They were buffers to the fan base. They were buffers to people in the athletic department. Losing both of them and not having anybody that he could turn to anymore, it, it would explain a lot as to how things got so negative, not just with the media, but especially within the athletic department, that he was dealing with these things and he couldn't talk to anybody about it. And it, he didn't have anybody that could kind of go talk to, to Mitch and be that go between. I, I truly think there is something to that and how much and how big of an issue that was. I don't know that we'll ever know. But there's a direct correlation in terms of timeline from when things just completely started falling off a cliff within the athletic department and him losing both of those two wonderful people. So especially Mike Pratt. I think you're right. I mean, I think you yeah. – I think there's – I think when the PV – if there's PV, then Pratt, and then Coach Hall passed away. I mean, I think uh, that – it was a lot of the people that were kind of there in his protective corner, right? Like if, if Cal's slugging it out and he's a heavyweight boxer, he's going to his corner, that's – He's got his cut man, his trainer, all that other stuff, and those, those are his dudes. And and let's let's face it. I mean, I, I mean, you know, running a running a company is lonely at the top. Running a college basketball program like that is lonely at the top. You, when you're having a bad day, you can't vent to your assistants, right? You got to play it up for your assistants. You can't. You you have to have, and especially if you have no relationship with your athletic director. You know, you've got to have somebody that when things get shitty and they get tough. And you need advice, you need help, you need someone to pick you up, whatever that is. I mean, that's real life. Like, we, we sometimes I think we do forget that these people are human, right? And they go through the same freaking emotions that we all do. And, um, I mean, uh, it's something in my work life I've got to be very intentional about. And I got people that I talk to every Thursday morning from across the country that are in a similar position that I am that kind of keep me going and give me perspective and give me the perspective that's not necessarily like right here, but maybe like a 3000 foot view so that you can kind of get a better understanding of really where you're at. Cause when you're in it, it's just, it feels like whatever's right in front of your face is what's most important. And the other, the other part of that too, is that, and, and I know this from, I, I, I'm, I miss the man dearly. Um, you know, Mike was on the board with KFOV with us and, I saw firsthand how he could, you know, just war light up a room with a smile and he could ask people for donations and he could ask people for help and they weren't going to say no to him. Yeah. And I wonder how much the, the issues with boosters, the issues with the crafts, et cetera, were kept at bay because it wasn't Cal coming to ask them for money or ask them for this or that or the other. 
it was Mike Pratt, and you weren't saying no to Mike Pratt. Well, I'll tell you what, Issel said he would be that guy. He said it on the radio the other day. Let's go, bring him back. Let's go, Iss. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get Iss in there and let's do it. And and Iss talks the way he talks about Mike Pratt, and uh, and I, I was lucky enough to know Mike. Also, he he used to live next door to my grandmother, and that was like, like, I mean, we shot in the driveway together. And and you're right, Ince. I mean, it was just an incredible, just incredible human being. And uh, but uh, every program definitely needs that. And then you know, can Jack Gibbons be that for Kentucky? Is there another guy that can kind of come back and be that a star from the '80s or or whatever that can kind of be that for Kentucky? It's it's really hard to say. And and I don't know that it was so much a star. It was just who Mike was. You know, yeah. he he always if he knew you, he had a nickname for you. He he would walk up to you, he'd patch, he'd slap you on the back, he'd give you a hearty handshake, he'd have that huge grin on his face. You know, he he never met a stranger. And I know that Cal was visibly distraught at at the um at the uh, farewell ceremony. And I just I wonder how much, you know, I, I miss Mike. Dearly, I wonder how much things might be different. I don't know that it would have changed anything on the court, but I sure as hell think it would have changed a lot of things off the court. And Mike might have been somebody who could have convinced him to walk away before things got ugly. Because that's yep. that's the that's the, that's the million dollar question from all this is what does Cal's legacy become? Because if he walks away and he does the tubby and, you know, he says, look, I, I, I'm taking a different job. Mm-hmm. Cal's going up in the rafters. He's he's remembered fondly for everything that went down. The way that this has turned out, especially if these rumors turn out to be true, that he was trying to force Mitch Barnhart out, for me, it completely tarnishes his legacy. It doesn't undo what he did, you know, the first five, six years. We had a lot of fun, a lot of success. But it almost becomes a Rick Patino type thing when he left U of L in shame and he left in scandal, and U of L fans were torn on how they felt about him. I yep. think it makes it very difficult to ever welcome him back, or in a, it puts him in a situation like Patino where he doesn't come back until something tragic happens and we get perspective and we go, okay, you can come on back. Because that's, mm-hmm. you know, remember, it took Bill Kitely passing away before UK fans really said, okay. Rick, you can you can come back and we'll you know we're not going to hold things against you. All right, this got really uh, like took a somber turn all of a sudden. So <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. I was just taking it in because I obviously I've you know I've listened I listened to him for years and I uh, I didn't really start on start helping out until after he had passed. But it was fantastic to hear uh, and see so you give that kind of um, again honoring him really. So I, I appreciated hearing that, though. All right. Um, uh, ask sorry. us a question. Change the topic. <laughs> well, no, it's, no, sorry. It's it's hard because there's people talking about like the the job again, and now I'm like, ah, am I going to be this guy who's going to be like, so what do you think about Scott Drew? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like especially after that, but I appreciate it. It's been, and I know you you gotta get to bed anyway, and so I know you got early morning and uh, yeah, I got a couple anyway. more minutes. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have hopefully it's more of real, these. This real big kind of, you know, he's too good for us. He did. I knew. I I told you as soon as I sent that text out, and she was like, oh, "I'm going to try to make it." Okay, we'll move it to nine nope. for you, Big Rig. We'll move it to nine just to make sure that you know the big show can make his appearance here for us plebeians, for us lower on the totem pole. So I texted that to him, and then he goes, "Well, you guys, you, you guys start, and I'll hop on when I can." When I get an opportunity to join you all, and I knew that was the big boy, big time. Like you knew, you, I, I could feel it. I was like, okay, all right, here we go. Here, here, here we go. Sorry, sorry, you know, I know you're about to say something. No, I just you know, eventually fans will realize that Ensign and I are the voice of the Kentucky fan base. You know, <laughs> not not Strebel, not Matt Jones. It's it's the two of us. Hey, if he keeps having kids, if he has, you know, when he, when he gets to five and six. It's a shame that uh, Lil Reed was kind of a waste, given that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say we. He was look, supposed to win a title. For years about how you know <laughs> he had he had Kellen and we won a title and he had the twins mm-hmm. and you know we went thirty eight and one. Well, I mean, we better get we better get Dan Hurley. Maybe that's, Reed. That's all I'm saying. That's, maybe that's Reed just got him out. We but we had Reed. Reed. 
<laughs> we had seven NBA All Stars. Since. Seven NBA yeah. All Stars. Hang the banner. <laughs> seven NBA All Stars. The greatest day in Kentucky basketball history. R- Reed Strebel is getting you all a, a new coach. That's what he's doing. He's Thank he's you. ending the cycle. He's starting in a new. It's so. got to be a good coach. It cannot be Scott Drew. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just, look, Scott. Again, I go back to what I said earlier. Scott Drew is a safe choice. He does not. I don't know anybody that's like, woo, Scott Drew. Yeah, it, loyal it, fans. They all were on. Well, 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 Scott Drew. Well, he, well he's he's the the tournament every year. Scott Drew but, would be would be that for Louisville because he's perfect for the Louisville situation. He would have been because he would rebuild a, um, frankly, a dead program, like a yeah. program that self imposed a death penalty. Very different, very different circumstances than what happened when he came to Baylor, but similar enough of, of re- resuscitating a program. That's why he would have been great. And yes, he won a title, and you know it gives you a chance to dream. Ah, it's Dreamble and I kind of talk. You know, there's lots of guys that won the, titles, right? And that's why. It was a little bit of uh, COVID time, uh, a few choking. There's a few things that led to him getting that title. But either way, he, he won a title, and it would have felt good for Lowell fans. For Kentucky fans, again, I, the the fit the fit makes sense for Mark, uh, Mitch Barnhart. To me, it doesn't make sense for UK fans. So I'm interested to see where 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 this thing goes. Uh, I, this thing keeps getting drawn out for Cal, for Cal Perry to actually be gone. Like obviously tomorrow that he's actually getting, you know, announced there, but like, I'm very interested to see how quickly this thing can be turned around for, you know, the actual coaching search and landing the guy. Cause I know we had talked obviously optimistically trying to get it done by Friday. That's not going to happen. I would imagine. I think I mean, it does maybe. happen. You think it does? I bet you it does. Yeah. All right. Then who is it? I bet you it does. <laughs> who is it? If it's Friday, is it, is it Scott Drew? If it's Friday, <laughs> it's probably is. I mean, and if I had to, Goes back to what I said earlier. If you try to pursue Dan Hurley when you know Scott Drew will say yes, you're putting yourself in a situation where you enter the weekend and you may not have a head coach because Hurley's going to have to think about it. He's going to have to talk about it with his wife. He's going to go back to UConn. They're going to make an offer. He's going to think on it some more. Mm-hmm. Versus if you know Scott Drew will say yes, you could make the announcement on Thursday and have the press. Hell, you could make the announcement tomorrow potentially, yeah. and you could have the press conference on Friday. And then you go into the weekend, the dead period opens up, you jump straight into recruiting, and more importantly, you jump straight into trying to keep guys who are committed. Because remember, Carter Knox, there's still rumors going back and forth as to whether he has or hasn't decommitted. His father's saying it's not true. Mm -hmm. So there's none of the none of the recruits that I've seen, unless something's changed in the last couple hours, have come out and said they're reopening their commitment. But I think this weekend will tell us a lot about that, right? I mean, once the cows officially at Arkansas, this weekend I think will tell us a lot about whether or not those recruits are considering that or not considering that. And I I anticipate that we're probably going to lose them, you know, besides Travis Perry. But uh, yeah. Well, no, we had the uh, we had the one um, I can't remember his name. Um, we had one of the recruits yesterday tweeted like he was fully committed to UK. After oh. it was already pretty much known that Cal was leaving, was it a uh, oh, the Q one? Was it him? It was the one. It was the one whose name I couldn't remember. I mean, Boogie Flan or whatever. No, uh, it wasn't it? Wasn't him? Hmm. Give me a second. It all. Her class and... Well, you know, I, at this point, uh, like the Jamie that whole thing. Yeah, that's the guy who's we're going to get for two years because he's sixteen. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so he has he to be in college basketball like, two years. Out, like he tweeted out that he was fully committed. You know, and part of me, I was talking to my dad today about that whole situation, and it goes back a little bit to the memory of like you know, we had the Kentucky Shane Patino comes in, and the only people who basically Pelfrey Feldhouse uh, and Richie Farmer get a shot to play at Kentucky that they never would have gotten in most years because they weren't good enough. They weren't good enough to get recruited at Kentucky coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. And you get this group of guys that maybe come to Kentucky and uh, and play because they want to play at Kentucky, and they get the opportunity that they normally wouldn't get to play at Kentucky, and they took full advantage of it. And, I mean, obviously they had to pull in a Jamal Mashburn along the way to really make it happen, but they they had that core of guys that really just wanted to play at Kentucky. You know, can something like that happen again, especially leading the charge with Travis Perry? We'll see. You know, I mean, uh, it would be pretty freaking amazing if 
that kind of thing kind of came about again because I mean that was that that team that lost that lost to Leitner in the tournament was so freaking special to the people especially that are my age, you know, my generation and just what they meant to uh you know us coming out of probation and, and everything else and and how they put Kentucky back on the scene. Mm-hmm. I'd I would love for something like that to happen again. So we'll see what happens. By the way, total side note, because I just want to have a little fun with it. I um I'm in the I'm in a betting Discord with um a bunch of UK U of L fans and got in a little argument last night. I, w- I would love to hear Mike's perspective. I don't know that you're old enough, so for oh, to remember mm-hmm. this team or not. But people were sitting there saying that the this UConn team might be the greatest team ever. 96 I mean, UK beats this team by 20. The 96 team was unbelievable. I I mean, the only thing that you could ever really say, I, it's pretty impressive what UConn did to their uh, margin of victory uh, record. But I think people forget that this is a this is a this is a it doesn't seem like a down year in college basketball because there was so much there really wasn't that much parity actually now looking back at it yeah but at the end of the day like nba is like dreading this draft okay <laughs> like th- there's not a whole lot of nba dudes that are playing college basketball right now and you're right ants i mean that can t- uh, that Kentucky team, that Mississippi State team from that year, that Syracuse team from that year, uh, they were all – they all had NBA talent and good NBA talent uh, that you would think that uh, the 96 team I would, would take over this UConn team for sure. I mean, really, this UConn team doesn't really even have that many household names, right? I mean, and that's that's one of the things I like about the potential of Hurley as a coach is he can just take a collection of dudes. Mm-hmm. They have one McDonald's All-American on the team. <clears throat> And he mixes his guys together and gets the result he needs to get. Um, so, well, I mean, Stefan Castle's a top ten pick. Yeah, and he was the one McDonald's All American, right? He's the yeah, he's a freshman. I mean, that's it. He's he's got a lot of young Rick in him. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't think that's like an over yeah, but, statement. The thing that I was telling people, you know, you go back and look at that team. They lost to they lost two games that year, and mm-hmm. both the teams that they lost to went to the Final Four. Yeah. And yeah. you go and look like UConn lost to Seton Hall who won the NIT. <laughs> yeah. They lost they lost to UMass in the second game of the season. That UMass team had Marcus Camby. Yeah. They lost to Mississippi State. The think about that. Think about what I'm saying. Eric Dampier. That was the second game of the season. Their mm-hmm. next loss was in the SEC championship game to Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Who went to the yep. final four. Closer. Do you know who they beat on their way? Look, and that's that's all great and dandy. Then they get to the tournament. Do you know who they had to beat to get to the Final Four? I don't remember. They had I to was six. Number I remember the number 16 ranked team in the, in the round of 32. Mm-hmm. They had to beat the number 10 ranked team, Utah, in the Elite or in the uh, Sweet 16. They had to beat the number 13 team, Wake Forest, who had this guy named Tim uh, Duncan. Tim Duncan? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. And they beat him by a 20. Mm-hmm. And then they had to play the number one team in the country in the Final Four, who had already beaten them that year in UMass with Marcus Camby. Yeah. By the way, that Duncan the, game record, was and doing all that set a record for average winning margin that stood until last night. That Tim Duncan game though was so much fun. I, I mean, it was it was incredible just to see. Uh, I I remember being legit a little nervous about them going up against Tim Duncan in that game, and when they they came out just blazing and uh it was it was an awesome that was an awesome awesome game when they beat duncan my christopher my, reeves my favorite, sorry go ahead my favorite memory of that season was them beating moorhead state 96 to 32 and they had more dunks they had more dunks than moorhead state had baskets <laughs> they, were, uh, I, they were everything justin they were you need to go back and watch videos they were everything that you loved about the rick patino years yeah nine on nba crack. guys nine on guys. absolute crap Ten. Ten guys that played in the NBA because people forget Jamal McGlory was on that team. Mm-hmm. I remember it, but I, again, I was six. Like I watched it, but I don't remember. Yeah. It, you know, so. And I don't do a lot of... I don't, I don't go back and watch a lot of UK's Glory Day. <laughs> McGlory was not, not on that team. List. McGlory was not Patino on that team. had to start a JV team so that he could get guys minutes. Yeah, yeah but that McGlory was not on that team. 
I thought he was. Yeah, he I thought came, he was. A, yeah. He was a, I thought he was a red shirt. No, because that's the year that the 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 team that played the JV schedule was Oliver Simmons, Nazi Muhammad, and Scott Patch, and then they put a bunch of dudes around him. McGlore wasn't there yet. I thought he was a red shirt that year for some reason. Well, he might have been. Maybe he was a red shirt, but he definitely. I I don't think he was. He didn't play, but he was on the yeah. team. That's why. That's why people usually say. You think McGlore's ten. got a '96 championship ring? Though is that your? Do you think that is true? No, but he was in the program, and there was a reason that he got. There was a reason he got redshirted. He was stuck behind two guys named Pope and Muhammad. Did sorry? Did you see the I'll tweet from about, Strebel? I'll go back and look. What's the tweet from Strebel? And this is two hours ago, so he, he, he's may, got- he, he may be asleep. I thought it was live, but it was the for you side, not the following. So I was about to be pissed, but he's awake, just tweeting, just tweeting yeah. away in, oh, instead of whatever. Oh, no. But did you see that he, his source? Now he's finally trusting his source instead of. You know, we could have been doing a live on Saturday night or I guess Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday afternoon uh, about Cal leaving. But anyway, a source about Cal is getting one of his old buddies to follow him to Fayetteville about KP going with him and that, that is, it is Kenny Payne. Uh, is this is this staff going to be Kenny Payne and Brad Calipari? That would be awesome. <laughs> Go yeah, for I, it. Arkansas boosters are going to be so mad. So excited. They'll be so excited. That's the staff. I mean, as and I mean, by the way, you're right. He enrolled. He enrolled in the summer of '96, so he was on the '96 '97 team. Yeah, so he I, was I, not on the '97 team. And then also, sorry, old uh, buddy over here. I just I passed it up. Christopher Reed's been going off about the whole. Like, I, I get you're upset, and you don't want Scott Drew. <laughs> you, you sent like 97 messages <laughs> about bleep Scott Drew. This ain't well, gonna I mean, change don't anything. You know, Nothing. So much Barnhart's in here. He's listening right? to what we. <laughs> He might be, yeah, yeah. He's watching this, but it, it, and also, but he said that Scott Drew equaled you all becoming Indiana, and I'm like, no, <laughs> what we were doing, what we're risking on the little side could risk the Indiana thing, but that would not be that would not be UK becoming Indiana by hiring Scott Drew. Get, get the what was going to become better? No, no, I mean like, well, <laughs> I've been being lost in the woods for 20 years. <laughs> is what I mean by that. Nebraska football. Yeah, Nebraska. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Anyway, um, uh, Cards fan agrees. Ninety six was the best one. They're uh, sometimes ugly jerseys are the greatest. Oh, the <laughs> denim a, jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. The denim or the, the backgammon ones. With uh, backgammon ones, might have been like the next year or whatever. Uh, those those were hideous. The backgammon and those shorts were so freaking long, man. <laughs> like so long. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to everybody that's been in here as well. There's 1,900 people that have been watching us uh, concurrently right now. If you haven't gone over to the fucking YouTube channel, go over to the goddamn YouTube channel. <laughs> YouTube.com slash at sign ampersand. What, or not ampersand. What's the at sign? Is there an at sign? Or what's the name for that? Do y'all know what that is? That's what it is. That's is it just called at sign? Ampersand. No, no, ampersand. Uh, ampersand oh, is the, the and. and. And okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's okay. a name for it. I just don't know. Maybe it's just at, like you said, at ESP in Louisville. Subscribe to the fucking YouTube channel. That's all I'm asking. Hit the subscribe button, please. Do that. I'm getting my f bombs out of here because I, because I can. Um, I let, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw this earlier. I haven't watched it, but apparently Ellen Calipari put out a uh, farewell. I saw a little bit well. of it. Do, do you I, want me to play it on here? No, no, it's too long. I think at the Is end of the it, day. It took me a while. Like I had to go back and look at some of her old Instagram stuff because she calls like it's weird that she calls Calipari her roommate all the time, right? So um and then all her Instagram is is like videos of Cal taking the trash out to the curb. I guess it proves that he does walk the dog every once in a while too. Like they 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 put that out because how how weird was that walking the dog video and and how big of a flex was it? Like I don't know. The whole thing, the whole deal, dude. Like it was just I I joked that the because the dog wasn't in the carrier. I joked that um, the carrier was containing the last shreds of his dignity. <laughs> he was to just me, wheeling him around. To me, that video is almost as good as the Gillespie video. Almost. Like, to me, it's no, almost as good. No, but no, it's not even. It's not even the, as as uh as as Jewel says. It's not even the same fucking sport. It, 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 that it, that take, video. That mm-hmm. video belongs in the Hall of Fame. Take, that, wait, that video yeah. is that video is should be up there in the yeah. um the uh congressional historical thing where they put you know um what what's the what's the moniker for it uh films that have been deemed oh. 
important to the culture of America or whatever, <laughs> that belongs there. Do not, do not That's put right. this video in the same paragraph. <laughs> well, tell me, okay. As Alan Cutler running Billy Gillespie <laughs> down outside the practice facility. This might, this might be one of the last things I asked tonight, but like, what explain to me his mental process in this is it just a like i'm john fucking calipari i'll do whatever i want because i mean he didn't act that way when he walked you know up and down the street is he is that his normal process is walking up and down Richmond? because i know he lives right there obviously the, the house on is right there. and richmond road yeah yeah but but at the same time like you know at this time at this moment in time at this moment of time you can walk your dog in the backyard like you can, you know, you can avoid because there's going to be somebody out there to get you and to act, you know, to act like, why the fuck? I mean, he didn't say it, but you know what I mean? To act like, why would somebody ask me for an interview right now? Or did Sorry, he guys, want the attention? Just walk to my dog. Yeah, just, yeah, he wants the attention. He's a, he's an attention whore. Again, I'm just, it, I'm it, so it, excited. But what that, is that? What? What is the attention from that? Just, I, I don't know. So you know he's there? I mean, he's, I wearing, yeah, I he's wearing the same pullover. Again, this is why I believe... This is why I believe the reports about him thinking that the fan base would rally and that the boosters would rally to his support mm -hmm. and choose him over Mitch. I think he was trying to show people to get back in their their attention of, hey, I'm you know I'm sad, I'm getting ready to leave. This yep. is your last chance. Hey, I'm still here. You're gonna that miss for me, me is what it is. It letting I'm people really leaving. know that he was still in Lexington. <laughs> <laughs> that he hadn't flown to Arkansas yet, that he wasn't talking to them at that moment about the job. He was still the average everyday guy walking his dog down the street in Lexington. <laughs> I'm one of you. You guys are crazy. Poop marshmallows and ice Jag cream off. and all the other stuff. That's well, what it was. It was yeah. his it was his last ditch effort to try to drum up some sympathy and hope that UK fans would suddenly get scared of Oh my God, he's he's really going to leave us. Not realizing that UK fans were waiting for him to open the gate so that they could show up with packing trucks and boxes and help him move his ass out. Hey, coach, you eat pasta? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that sounded so great. I'm, I, hey, look, coach. Actually, I'm going to miss this one. I'm going to miss this. Uh, Did you like the taste in your mouth? Let's get that taste back in our mouth. <laughs> oh, that, and that is going to be the biggest, the biggest loss that we're going to have here is just, I don't know who you're going to get, but no matter who you get, I don't, they're not going to perform like him and Rick did. Well, that's not. what I was talking about earlier about getting this, hiring the, hiring the safe person. It might not actually work here at Kentucky to have a safe person. You've got to have, you got to have a little bit of that. That's mm -hmm. what Patino and Cal had in spades. And that's what made them like just uber entertaining while they were here right so yeah my part of me wonders because again it goes back to i don't know how much longer mitch is going to keep this job it's a safe hire for him does he make this hire hoping that it'll be three four five years before the uk fans get annoyed if he doesn't have success versus you bring in a guy with the unknown who doesn't have a national championship on his resume and they maybe get pissed off and he's in a billy gillespie situation in two years and he's got to make another decision. I think I've, I've, I mean, Mike, you and I have talked about this numerous times over the last month and a half that I think he didn't want to have to make the decision about firing John Calipari because he didn't want to have to go through all this again. Mm -hmm. I think once it got utterly toxic and he realized he didn't have a choice, he tried to make it happen. And then he, you know, he resigned himself to it and did the hostage video and all that. But I don't think he ever wanted to have to go through this again. It's the same reason why he kept giving Stoops contract after contract after contract. It's, well, I know what I have. I don't have to put myself at risk again and make a hire that backfires on me. I, I don't think that's him at all. But I personally look at him like, dude, all right, like he's made a lot of hires at Kentucky. And some have worked and some have not. I got to admire the guy who actually, like, for example, I go, I go back to Rich Brooks. And there were T-shirts being made for the Rich Brooks farewell tour, and the fans were done with Rich Brooks. And Mitch, I think, has the ability to see if it's working or if it's not working. Because let's face it, you never really know if it's going to work or if it's not going to work until it actually until it happens. And when it doesn't work, he swiftly made the adjustment to 
to, to like the two years with Gillespie, two years with Joker, oh, whatever it took. You're, you're misremembering no, that Gillespie. No, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not there. I'm not there yet. He, he when it when right. it when he actually saw that they weren't working, he was he got out and he moved on to the next thing. When he, I'm talking about once they been once they were there. The Gillespie hire situation was a tough, tough deal, and I don't think I don't know if I was ready for them to hire John Calipari at that point either. Honestly, at the um, then at the but then when he saw like Rich Brooks struggling and he was getting pressure from the fans to make a decision there, he saw that Rich Brooks had the program going the right direction, and he waited until that actually came to fruition. You can't fire Mark Stoops, dude. Come on now. I mean, ten with seasons, ten no, two I'm ten with seasons. Fire Mark Stoops. I'm saying he doesn't want to have to ever get in a situation where he has to hire a new coach. That's and I'm just he saying he hasn't had, he had he hasn't had a hire he hasn't had a hire truly backfire on him. No, I'm not saying backfire. I'm saying he doesn't want to have to make another decision. If Mark Stoops took another job, he'd have to make a new hire. He'd have to get yeah. another one right. I think he worries about getting them wrong. I think that's why he takes the safe pick here. But you're rem just remembering a lot of that Billy Gillespie situation. He was more than, he was more than happy to give him a third year. It was when shit started going south off the court and you started having the issues with players getting sent back to Lexington and vans and locked in bathroom stalls and some rumors about things going on with co-eds. That was when he had to make the decision to get rid of it. He was going to give him another year just like he did with, with – Brooks, and look, I was a student at UK. I had a T-shirt that said Ditch Mitch and Fire Rich. All right, I was in that, I was in that group, and then we beat Georgia because he was going to lose his job, and then we beat Georgia and turned things around, and our guy Justin Jeffries kicked ass in 2007. Um, but he was more than willing to let him stay. But he – I mean, you don't have to look any further than Matthew Mitchell to see where he does not necessarily give up on a hire or move on when it's obvious to everybody under the sun that it's a bad hire. He has stuck with some guys and and women way too long at their jobs at UK. So I'm not going to I, – I, I give him credit for the things he has done right, but I'm not going to whitewash his career at UK and say that he's moved on and made good decisions and quick decisions when things are going bad because there have been some situations, the Matthew Mitchell one in particular, where he let things get way out of hand before he was forced to make a decision. Let's not get race, racial over here. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm it's kidding. White he's, he's in white. I'm just kidding. Um, so, okay, I guess the question I want to ask you, because you're bringing up about Barnhart not wanting to make a hire, then what? What's his? What's his future plan? How long does he want to be at Kentucky? Then, like, if he does, if he didn't want, I mean, I understand this is a massive hire to make, no matter what. But like, what was his game plan before this came up? Like, ride it out for a few more years, or like, how long was is he expecting to be there as the AD? He's got to get close. That's what I'm looking up because I mean I think he looks good for his age. He's 64, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and and we and talk about coach. He's been there what 20 there since 2002, 22 yes, years. 22 years. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, he's got a very impressive list of uh, of athletic directors that worked under him that have gone other places. Um, uh, and I you know. That the guy is one of the more respected ads out there. I know a lot of people don't like him, whatever else. I, I think we're lucky to have him at at, at UK. So I my issue, and I think a lot of UK fans' issues, is he lets his personal beliefs dictate some things that he shouldn't. Um, especially when it comes to the alcohol sales, I think he let his personal beliefs dictate what was what what he wanted to do versus what was better for the program and what the fans wanted. Um, but again, I think. I think Scott Drew is somebody he's had his eye on for a while. You're, when you're an athletic director, you're not sitting there, unless your name's Josh Hurd, you're not sitting there without a list of guys you want in case something happens and you lose your coach at the end of the year. Because contracts are great, but a guy could retire at the end of the year. A guy could take another job at the end of the year. He's got a list of people he wants. I think Scott Drew's been on the top of that list for a while. I agree. Going, I, I like the slight. I, I appreciated that. Part of me wonders if, like, if 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 Josh Hurd kind of wanted to do Pat Kelsey from the beginning, and that's who he really wanted, and he just couldn't justify it until that happened. I wonder. I wonder. Well, it could have been true because I mean, Pat Kelsey checks all the boxes that Josh mm -hmm. Hurd. Yeah, I I guess I mean this is not at the U of L show, whatever else. Right. When when Josh Hurd gave his press conference after firing Kenny Payne, 
And we know that he really didn't make that Kenny Payne hire, especially that he was an interim at that side, and he took full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Josh Hurd, that press conference for me won a lot of uh, Brantley points with me about Josh Hurd, you know? Yeah. I, I thought he he jumped on that grenade uh, more than he had to, and he talked about what he wanted, and he went out and got it. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. It, and and look, I, I think, I, I, you know, I again, not to turn this into a UFL thing, but just to clarify – I'm not Strebel. I don't hate your guy's new coach. Mm -hmm. I think he's corny as shit. That yeah. doesn't mean that he's not a good coach. That doesn't mean he's not exactly what you guys needed. Because after Kenny Payne, look, if, if I'd had to suffer through Kenny Payne, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I'd want as a coach who goes exactly. out there and makes yeah. me feel good. Makes me feel like there's promise. Makes me feel like there's somebody who gives a shit. Well, he's it's corny. Kind of yeah, but, deny that he's corny. But that's kind but of again, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean he's gonna fail. Yeah, and that's always oh. that's kind of always the scenario. A little bit. There's a little bit of that always, I feel like, where a coach who has personality will come off as either corny if they're losing. If they're winning, then it's just like oh, that's him. You know what I mean? But if it, but if he's losing and he's not successful, it's corny as shit, and you're just like, I'm, I'm you're you're more done with it then. Because like, I think the funny I mean, thing is like we and and mainly because of Kelsey's personality is more out there, but well, like one of my motivational guys, the podcast is it's a podcast called Ed Milet Show, mm -hmm. and I love the Ed Milet Show; it's awesome. Uh, but Dan Hurley went on that, went on the Ed Milet Show. He's the only college basketball coach that I think I've heard do the Ed Milet Show, and Hurley has all, all that stuff in him. He just doesn't let it come out the way that Patrick, like Pat Kelsey, does. And you would never guess that by Hurley, by by seeing him, you would never see this like some of the stuff of his personality that we get. It goes that show goes deeper into than that he never shows on the uh, to the media. Which you know, I think at the end of the day, uh, the corniness is true. I think it's the rare po the. And I guess we don't necessarily know this is true, but all all indications that I've seen about PK has been that he's the rare occurrence where the raw raw guy is actually a really good X no coach because usually the raw raw guys a raw raw guy mm -hmm. because they're not a good X no coach. Oh, you mean like uh guy, oh, what's his name? John Calipari? Uh, John <laughs> Vincent Calipari. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're talking about this. The same look, it, Louie made a really good point on his show today that don't give him credit. The rivalry needed to be, I think he's going to help revitalize the rivalry. James Strebel. James freaking Strebel took the day off last year on the UK U of L game mm -hmm. because there, we knew it was going to happen. He didn't need to be there. There was nothing for him to talk about. By the way, Stanford's women's head coach, uh, Tara Van Derver, is retiring after 38 seasons. Maybe we can go get her, Mike. No, no. She's not Don <laughs> Staley. She's a hell of a coach. She's a Hall of Famer, but she's not Don Staley. <laughs> What's Matthew Benson um, doing? Sorry, I had to. Sorry, I had to. But Go for it. Strebel took the day off because there was, what are you going to do on that rivalry? You know, we're going to yeah. beat Kenny Payne by 20. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I, I think it is good to have a coach who can get the fan bases on both sides, either A, fired up on your guy's side, or B, antagonized on the other side. Because I don't know about y'all. Mm -hmm. I love whooping y'all's asses, but I love the build up to that game. Yeah, I love how much – investment we get into it and the pro you know from the from the stadium or the station side the programming is entertaining the shit talking is entertaining mm -hmm. you got you got rummage and and maben and blank saying off the wall shit you got strebel <laughs> saying off the wall shit yep. the rest of us are kind of in the middle taking all the bullets and trying to duck but it's fun this wasn't fun it was fun beating mm -hmm. you guys but, but the lead up to it wasn't yeah. fun what are we gonna say to y'all haha we're gonna beat you but like, you're, you're uh, eorn you're eorn it over there. Yeah, I know. I know it's fun, but like, I mean, wh was it fun? Because was it fun? Because like to me, watching that game, it was oh, Cal has has them set at keep it at nineteen. Like every time, oh, the it, first half sure it, talk wasn't fun when we're sitting there. Like, are we really gonna <laughs> fucking lose to these guys? Yeah, one, one of my uh, good friends had a thousand dollar bet on the first half there, and uh, he was. I, I was like, I was like, dude, like it's gonna be fine. I didn't know. Like what you know, he just had a he didn't tell his wife. So so it was one of those where he's sitting there like living and dying with the first half I'm like, dude, it, it's Kenny Payne. You're 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 not gonna lose this game. It's gonna be all right. So I just but but I will uh, say you've seen our coach lose to Oakland and uh that's and true. 
you know, for some, St. Peter's, right? <laughs> for, for some reason, he just gets it up for Louisville, though. He always gets it up for that game. Or he yeah. he, he can make it happen. I, Even I, when he was supposedly good, he lost to the worst Evansville team of all time. Like, it was... Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, like, he was doing but, Walter McCarty a Rob favor. Morris. But there's a truth to that. Like, no matter what, like... Honestly, I, at least this is my opinion. Being a Louisville fan isn't nearly as much fun without the rivalry aspect of Kentucky. And I would 100%. imagine same thing for Kentucky. Like the rivalries make being a sports fan fun. Like if you're no, just literally, you, to be, you you can't enjoy the victory as much if there's not a twinge of doubt that you actually might lose the game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like you have to have the nervous energy going into the game that there's a chance that you might lose, so that when you win, it's that much sweeter. And at the end of the day, again. When Louisville's better, it makes Kentucky better, mm -hmm. and, I, and vice versa, right? And when yep. both of them are in the top ten, this is the freaking – well, it's the best college basketball market anyway, but when they're in the top ten, mm -hmm. it is off the freaking chain around here. And if Indiana gets going too, man, forget yeah. about it. The you know, experience F is unreal. Tobacco Road, yeah. right? That's the, funniest, <laughs> that's the funniest joke you've made all night, Mike. What's that? <laughs> about Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. Uh. <laughs> but seriously, if, if Indiana is good, then forget about Tobacco Road. This is this is the epicenter. Yeah, you know this is where it is. Oh, it is. And, and then and, you, and you include talked about repeatedly. You get one shot at it. You you fuck that up. You're sitting there for a full year. And there is nothing better than winning that game and walking into work the next day wearing your UK hoodie. And your U of L season ticket holder coworkers got to sit there and watch you all day and have it reminding them the whole day. Yeah, we whooped Charles' ass again. There was none of that this year. Because we're like, yeah, we wanted you to win. We want Kenny Payne to get fired. It's like, yeah. let me have a little fun, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Where is it? I love John Calipari. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I just want to win by one. That motherfucker. Like, God, that pissed me off. I he If he wasn't a plant, like, he... I, I just... I have a hard time believing. I'm sorry I'm not doing this, but, like... Nobody can be that bad at their job. He had to. There had to be. There's no, no way. You, again, self row. You're forgetting the whole, the whole plant thing went all the way back to Howard Schnellenberger. We had to give you somebody good, to, yeah, no, so but, you could start thinking about like that. We're get that we're gonna be helping you well, just I mean, to destroy your basketball program. Maybe when I say KP, when I maybe when I say UK <laughs> plant, like he is actively doing this because like personal, like you know, I didn't get hired by Rick and all these whatever all, all this bullshit going back. Like when I say UK plant, I don't mean like. Mitch Barnhart oh, is like sitting in the background, like planning this thing out. No, I just mean like he, he just loves him some UK and believe U of L is what he was thinking the entire time. Like there's, you can't prove to me. There's no evidence that that wasn't the case. You know what I mean? Like there's no he does evidence. Have a 1986 that national championship ring. I think he just didn't want to do the work. I think he just didn't want to do the work and he realized, well, I can, I can get paid and not do the work. <laughs> I could be an insane amount of money for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, good. Good for him. Did you Good see his him. solitaire scores during that time? They were off the charts. <laughs> he finally took Louisville off of his uh, Louisville head basketball coach off his Twitter account. So, <laughs> see go. that required work. Put, he didn't want to coach. I'm sure <laughs> he his gets all post coach. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna let you on here to put a diaper on John Calipari. <laughs> I'm gonna miss these. I'm gonna miss all of this. Who knows, man? We might get something good. You know. I need, I need, I need, we've got a, uh, we got a game on Saturday. I need to get to the bus. Oh, <laughs> is that, is that in the drop box? After his three minute press no, probably conference. Not. I'm like a Wednesday night game. <laughs> After LSU. <laughs> oh my God. So good. We well, have an early game Saturday against Alabama. <laughs> I think, I think that's the closest I've ever come to cussing on air reception. <laughs> We got oh, Bulls people in here saying they they hope UK takes Billy Donovan. <laughs> sure. Overall, and so I agree with you on the Billy Donovan thing. Like it's not. I I, I think that um, you know if the guy wanted to take the job, he should have taken it a while ago. This I don't know if it now is the time, but um, yeah. I mean, plus it feels like if he were to take that job, it's just him running away from failing in the NBA. It's not him looking mm -hmm. for a new challenge. It's him getting out of town while he can. The other part of it is, too, if his name weren't Billy Donovan and he had the resume that he has with the NBA, would any UK fan want him? The answer is no. No, no. It, it's the it's the eternal, like, just affair that they've had with Billy Donovan forever that just, you know. Yeah. The romanticized. And like I said last night, like, you, it's almost like 
there's it's almost impossible for him to live up to the expectations that people have when they think about Billy Donovan, right? Yeah. All right, boys. I um I think it's getting a little bit late. I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to get off your chest, but I'm sure we'll have plenty more of this to do throughout the. Re- ho- I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping we'll have some like breaking news in the evenings to give us a reason to do this again uh, later this week. Uh, Jason, Mike, thank you for uh, both joining me today. Um, any final thoughts you want to put out there before we cl- before we wrap it up? We went two hours. Please a day. hire the coach. Please hire the coach in the next seventy two hours so that. <laughs> I can, you know, enjoy my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something interesting to watch. Can can uh, can Kentucky make as big a splash as Arkansas did? You know, is it going to be a huge story? Uh, Kentucky's new hire versus John Perry going to Arkansas, and uh, it needs to be a big splash. So um, that's what uh, that's what needs to happen. Let's go. Let's go get it done. I'm going to be very curious to see how much because I I think the story was more Cal leaving UK than Cal going to Arkansas. I'm very curious to see how much coverage that actually gets nationally. I would not surprise me to see Kentucky's search get way more attention, publicity, airtime, et cetera, than John Calipari being announced at Arkansas. Yeah. I, yeah. I could see it. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody who's joining us tonight. Uh, we have over 2000 people uh, concurrently right now. So thank you all so much for doing this. Uh, we'll continue to do this. Uh, hopefully, like I said, throughout the week, if you haven't already go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, hit the like on Twitter, or Facebook, wherever you're watching it right now as well. It helps us. Like, I, I don't think you guys realize it helps to continue to grow this brand and helps us to bring you more and more content in the future. Um, as well. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can follow me at Justin Silver on Twitter. You can follow him at Jason uh, UK17 on Twitter. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, you can follow yeah. him at Big Mike Gandolfo. As for now, we will see you guys next time.